Greetings and welcome to our daily walk through the scripture for Sunday, January the 7th. Have you seen this trend on social media of people who call themselves dinks? Uh, that's a weird name. It's a silly name, but it's an acronym that stands for dual income, no kids. And it's an example of when a married couple has made a conscious decision to not have children. And they are basically celebrating their lifestyle. Now, I'm not here to get into the goods or the bads or the politics or the morality or any of that of, of their choice in their life. That's a conversation for another day. But I do it because I want to com kind of compare it to what was being faced in the days of Abram and Sarah, said I, in Genesis. Because today, it's not uncommon for people to make the conscious choice to not have children. Uh, they, they choose to, to focus on other things. Maybe it's the relationship of their marriage. They choose to focus on career. There are a lot of reasons why they choose not to have children. But what they don't receive as a result of that choice is any kind of scorn or, or public humiliation. They don't receive it. It's just looked at. Some people go, okay, well, I don't necessarily agree with it, but it, it, it's your choice. Well, contrast that with Abram and Sedai. They are in a society in Genesis and in biblical days in general where you were looked at as less than if you didn't have children. Not only that, but you looked at maybe you had done something wrong, that God was judging you, uh, that you were being punished for something. There were a variety of reasons, but if you were a couple that did not have children, you were looked at and, and, and you were embarrassed and you were ashamed and you felt pressure. Because this was, remember, this is when the earth is being populated. This is after God's mandate and after Noah and the earth is being repopulated. And so having children was expected, not just one children, but many children was to be expected. So to not have any was very shameful. And this is what Abram and Sarai were facing and dealing with right now. And so in Genesis chapter 16, even though Abram had received the promise from God that he was going to be the father of many, he... I don't know. It's kind of interesting. It's like he didn't believe God at this point. Um, and that was really strange because uh, here's here's a guy that was called to go leave his family and country in the land of Ur to go to a land that God was going to show. Uh, and, and so anyway, Sarai decides that she wants to take matters in her own hands. And so she gives Abram her servant, Hagar. And Abram lays with Hagar and they have a son named Ishmael. Now, Ishmael and Hagar have a bit of a difficult situation and a difficult story, and we see Hagar rebel against Sarai later and, and, and have some consequences. And, and God ultimately will bless Ishmael, uh, and, and there will be a number of descendants that we'll, again, talk about in another devotional. But this is an example of when we try to circumvent God's plan, or we try to accelerate God's plan, or, or add to God's plan because we, we think we know better. And unfortunately, it led to uh, some pretty great consequences because Hagar and Sarai ended up having incredible resentment with one another. They ended up having all sorts of issues and relational issues. Um, it created a, a bunch of strife in within Abram's whole entire community. Now remember, Abram and all of his servants and everybody, they were all part of this one tight-knit community and all sorts of catastrophe and relational issues came about because of Abram's decision to circumvent and shortcut and, and allow those things to happen. When we decide that we're going to do something on our own, generally as a rule, it doesn't work out like we think it will. God's timing is just that. It's God's timing. It is perfect. It is never late. It is never early. It is always exactly when it is supposed to be. And it's really easy, I think, for us to forget that. It's really easy for us to forget what it is that, that we're supposed to be doing, and that is simply trusting God. When Jesus is in the middle of his Sermon on the Mount, he breaks away from it for a second and teaches them how to pray. He gives them the Lord's Prayer. And one of the things that he says is, this is a prayer of submission. He talks about our Father in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come and your will be done. This is not Jesus saying, hey, you know, I hope your will gets done. No, it is more of, God, let me submit to your will. Let me, let me serve you and follow your will and allow it to be done in my life with trust, with grace, with mercy, with all of the things. See, when we take matters into our own hands, it always ends up messier than if we had just simply allowed God to do what he does when he does it.
So that's our devotional thought for today. May you have a blessed one.